quilters love the cozy textured look of rag quilts, but they can be time consuming to make. Not to worry, I am going to show you my five ways to rag quilt faster. These are my techniques that I use to speed up my rag quilting. It's a real game changer. I'm Leah Louise from Inspired Quilting by Leah Louise, and we are talking about using fabric strips. Instead of cutting all those blocks and smaller batting sizes and quilting them all together and stacking them up and sorting them through, we are going to cut strips and it's going to go so much quicker. Once you get started, you'll be finished in no time. Now let me show you how to speed up your rag quilting. Check out my pretty fabric. Oh my goodness, this is going to make a beautiful little rag quilt. You'll notice that I have two colors and it's primarily pinks with gray as kind of your background. Although this one is a, a, a dark lavender gray, but it looks really pretty in there. And I, I like going with the dots. So it's geometric, essentially. There's not a lot of prints. And I've got a checkerboard here, a large one, small one, dots in a number of varying styles, and of course a fun chevron, and that'll just add some interest. So I'm going to be alternating blocks throughout the quilt. What we're going to do in order to make this a really fast quilt is to multitask. We are going to be uh, sort of think like production line. We're going to be working on something with everything at once and then move on to the next step. And that's going to save us a lot of time. So as we're doing that, we need to think about our, our blocks, how we're putting our quilt together. One of the key techniques that I use is to cut strips. Now, this quilt is going to have three layers of flannel. This uh, similar quilt can also be done in using the batting in between instead of flannel. And I'll link that video up above so you can see that. But I really like the flannel for a fast quilt because we don't have that extra layer that we have to worry about. We just put three layers together. And the trick to that is how we cut it. So let's go ahead and get started. I have a lot to show you. As I said, we are going to use the width of fabric to our advantage. And what I mean when I say that is we are going to cut our fabric from salvage to salvage. And our quilt is going to be the same width as the fabric. So this would be a great lap quilt, which is sort of the size I'm going with. Or you can make it into a baby quilt. Now I have eight fabrics and I'm going to have a total of 16 strips. So I'm going to use each fabric twice. And each strip has three layers and a front of back and then that center layer, which helps to give the quilt a bit more structure, makes it a little bit heavier, and it also makes awesome fraying. So one thing that's really important here is 100% cotton. You've got to go with cotton in order to get that fraying. Now, what we'll do is line this up, and I need six strips. I'm going with five inches. And by the time we do our seam allowance, that means the the uh, each strip is going to measure four inches. So the quilt is going to be roughly 40-ish inches wide, but I'm going to add a border, which I'll show you how to do that as well. And by the 18 strips, which is something in the neighborhood of about just over 60 inches. And so that's a nice lap quilt. It's larger than what you would a baby quilt, but it could work for that too. And you choose the fabrics that you like, whatever works. And if you want to go with larger prints, maybe, um, you know, for a child or sporting events, things of that nature, just, you know, play around with it that works best for you. It is something to think about if you're going to have directional fabrics that you have to keep things going in one way or another. But if you have a lot of different ones and you put them in different directions, then it doesn't matter. So those are just some things to think about. I'm going to cut this at five inches. Now, I'm not going to worry about my mat. I'm just going to align my five inches up at the edge of the fabric. And you see that I doubled it up. 
didn't get all the way across. You can see that I put two layers together, selvage to selvage. So when I cut this, I'm getting two lengths. And I need to have six total in order to have two strips. So I'm going to do that two more times. Now, with a yard of fabric, that works out really well because that's going to take uh, 30 inches. And, of course, our strip, our fabric at one yard measures 36. So we do have enough for an extra strip or something, depending on what you want to do. So if you decide you want to make it even longer, you certainly can. So this is going to be our extra. On the other hand, I, uh, I have a class. I'm going to show you how to make a border, but I have a class on how to make a ruffled border. And you can use these extra pieces to do that. So I'll, I'll add that information below. You might want to check it out. It's kind of fun. It looks pretty awesome. So I'm going to go through and do the same thing, but let me show you one more tip. And this is going to save us time when we go to sew. I have my three pairs of strips for a total of six and I'm going to open it out. The first one is going to go face down. The second one is going to go face up and the third one is going to go face up. Now I'm going to do this with all my strips. I'm not going to worry too much about getting everything exactly lined up but I'm going to wrap these together, sort of fold them up, so that I know I have my three strips, the selvages are on top, because that's where I'm going to start sewing, and then I can just run through and do all these at once. I'm going to do the same with the second set of three. Face down, because that's going to be my back. Face up, which is going to be my middle. It really doesn't matter which way this one goes, because you can go in either direction and it's going to work. But obviously we want the top one up. So we have right sides, front and back, and then we're just going to put these together and sew them up. We want to stage them so that they're ready when I go to sew them. I can just grab them and go. It's going to make it much quicker. And then we're going to start putting the quilt together. This is really fast. So remember, cut your fabrics together, get what you need, stage it the way you want it in the order that you want it, because we want to stack these in the order we're going to sew it. And that means in the order we want them to be in the quilt. So let me go ahead and finish this cutting and I'll show you what comes next. I'm ready to get started. I have all my fabrics stacked, ready to go. They're all in order in the uh, manner that I want them to lay out in the quilt. So I'm going to do everything in order as I go. So when it comes time to assemble the quilt, they're all exactly where I need them to be. And I do want to show you each set of strips. Remember there's three pieces are going to be lined up together. And we want to have one facing back and two facing front. And the first thing I'm going to do is align these pieces, the selvages. So we don't wash the fabric first and we don't cut the selvage off first. We're going to just go ahead and sew through. Sorry, I had a wrinkle there that was bothering me. We're just going to sew through and then we'll take care of all that afterwards. So what we'll do is use this selvage in order to align our strips. Now, I have my walking foot in. I have a new needle. Now I'm using a size 11. This flannel is something that I purchased at Joann's. And it's a very inexpensive flannel because it's quite thin. And I don't mind using thin flannel in three layers. You can probably get away with two layers if that's something you'd like to do. But I like that third layer for the heaviness of the quilt and it just gives it a little more weight and it also gives more fraying to have that extra layer of fabric in order to have it ravel out at the edges. And one of the most important things is that your fabric is 100% cotton. Now, one of the big time saving aspects here is that we are going to quilt this and again using the walking foot that keeps all our fabric moving at the same pace and that is going to allow us to just sew 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 and get all the way through 
Ordinarily with a rag quilt, you have squares. You have to go in and you have to crisscross. You may have batting in the middle instead of flannel, which means you have to cut it smaller. So by using these strips, we are saving a lot of time. And sewing down the center is a great way to quilt this. And it holds all the layers together so that when you wash it or use it, those layers don't shift around. Additionally, when you do wash this the first time, there will be some shrinkage, which helps it all sort of come together and get a little poofier. And this extra quilting in the middle is going to help accentuate that. Now, you want to sew down the center. And the best thing is to line your needle up at your halfway point. My strips are five inches, so I want to sew it two and a half. So I need to find a place somewhere that I can line my fabric up. Now, fortunately, I have this little line right here, and that's right at two and a half inches. So I can sew following that, and it'll be great. Alternatively, what you can do is take a piece of tape and run it right here, and then you know just run your fabrics along that. Um, but back to the needle, I'm using the lighter weight 11 needle because this is lightweight fabric. When I get to the point that I'm going to do the heavier seams together, I'll probably change it out. But this needle still has some life to it, so I'm going to go ahead and use it. Generally on a rag quilt, I'm going to use a size 12 or 14. And they're a little bit bigger, and they're going to help the thread go through all that fabric a bit easier. If you're doing denim, anything heavy like that, the heavier flannels or even corduroy, you want to make sure that you go with a size 16 because you'll need that to get through everything. Everything's aligned. I'm ready to start sewing through here. I have my thread. Remember, if you hold your thread down those first few stitches, you're not going to get the knotting on the back. So just lay your finger there when you start, and that keeps your threads where you want them so that it doesn't pull through and knot underneath. Now, whether you pin this is up to you or not, I don't. I just make sure that as I'm sewing, all three edges are aligned. And then I can line up over here and I just start sewing. And I'm going to just work all my way through. As I'm sewing, I want to make sure it's lined up. If I have a piece that's extending out, I'm just going to lift it up and make sure everything is aligned on this side. It could be that that was cut just a little bit larger. And once I line this up centered, I'm going to be pretty good. The beauty of rag quilts is that accuracy counts but it's not critical, like putting together triangles and things. Um, we just want to make sure that our fabrics are held together and that when we do our seams, the all the edges, all the um, fabrics, all the layers, that's the word I'm looking for, are sewn together in order to hold our quilt. And you can see how quickly that this goes because we just we just keep sewing. Now another time saver of course is chain piecing. So we're going to take our next group, our next stack, our strip set, whatever the words are that we're going to use to call this. I haven't quite decided yet. But we're going to take our three layers and line them up and chain stitch. Chain stitching just means that you keep going without stopping. You don't cut your thread, you just go, 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 and then once we're finished, we'll cut them apart. But the beauty is this is going to hold everything in order too. So when I go to piece my quilt, I know that everything I need is right where I want it to be. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this and just repeat this sewing 
from end to end on all my strips and I'll be back when that's finished with all my strips sewn together and I did want to mention I used a uh, bit larger stitch usually I sew with a 2.5 and I bump this up to a 3.0 and I do that with extra layers it just allows a little more thread to uh, go through the extra fabric and there was one thing I wanted to show you here as well I'm going to pull this back as I was sewing when I got to um, this particular set this three lengths the middle one was a bit shorter so either the fabric shifted when I was cutting or I cut something wrong whatever the case may be so I made sure that this was in the center and as I sew it down the middle it's catching that fabric now, I don't want this on the top or the bottom because when I take my seam allowance and sew this, that might not get caught in all the way from the back. If you've ever had um, too narrow a seam when you rag quilt and that back fabric doesn't come forward all the way, then you can have a problem. It gets messy. But this way, the fabric, the short piece, will be enclosed between the two wider pieces and it will be uh, held together really well. So that was just something I wanted to share with you. With those strips finished quickly like that, now we're going to start putting the pieces together. And as I said, having them in order just makes that a whole lot quicker to uh, sew together. So I'm going to take these two and the next two. And you want to think about as you're piecing these, if you want them to go in a particular, not order, because we're going to put them in order by the color, but if you want them to go in a certain sequence, like the gray to be first and then the pink. In this case, I'm just going to be putting pink and gray together and winging it from there and see how it all all turns out so my first fabric is going to go on the bottom and then my next fabric is going to go on top and I'm going to align the ends where I started because this will keep one side of my quilt nice and straight using those selvages and then when I'm ready to uh, trim my quilt down for the final clipping then I know that one side is straight and I just have to trim the other edge obviously I'll cut this selvage off too the other thing I do want to mention is keep your threads short you don't want long threads hanging out at your seams because that's going to show up when you are sewing your uh, your seams together that thread is different than the fibers in the fabric and they definitely will stand out and be visible even though the colors match now we are going to use a half inch seam but i'll be honest i use almost a 5 8 seam i take it just that little bit extra about an eighth of an inch more it gives me a nice good hefty seam but also it gives me more clipping so i can cut it in a little deeper to get more of a frayed edge so i'm going to start right up here i'm going to line up at five eighths and you can certainly take a half inch that's fine and and that's what what we do you know by standards of right quilts but i do take a larger a larger seam and that's just what i do so something to think about maybe you prefer doing that as well but as i'm sewing i want to line up again my edges because these are already quilted that's going to hold everything together while I sew so all I have to concern myself with is matching these three with that three right there when you get to the end of your rows when you're combining the fabrics together don't expect them to match the reason being is different fabrics are different widths that's why we never know when we're using a width of fabric to gauge our quilt what size it's going to be because some will be maybe 44 inches some may be 41 but that's why we're measuring everything at the beginning to even them up and then when we come down here this will be the edge that we're going to cut off and uh, trim when before we do our clipping and it's nice when you use all the same strips 
or the same fabric as your strips because you don't have to worry about the front and the back. And when you're assembling this, you know the front's going to be the same as the back. So you don't have to worry about turning things around. And if some of your blocks are different colors, how are they going to work on the back as well as on the front? Again, we're talking about fast here. And these are methods that's going to get your quilt finished more quickly. And so far, so good. So I'm going to continue sewing all my pairs together. And then I'll show you where we go from there. With all my strips sewn into pairs, I am going to do a bit of clipping. The clipping on a rag quilt can be kind of cumbersome and take a long time if you do it all at once. This way, I'll sew for a while, I get all my strips sewn, then I'm going to come in and I'm going to clip my seams. And that just works out for me when I do this before adding everything together. The other thing is I don't have such a heavy quilt to hold on my lap while I'm clipping. What I really like using are my clippers, and these are rag quilt clippers or snippers, whatever you want to call the name of them. And I use these specifically for rag quilting because they have this spring. The spring is what makes this so much easier to use. You know when you use a pair of scissors, you squeeze down, but then your thumb has to pull it back out. This way, when I release my little latch here, I just let go and see how that spring pushes that out. So I'm using a lot less effort to cut with these and it creates less, less stress on your hands, on your muscles, and it just makes it more comfortable. Now my first clip is going to be at least a good inch and a half in because I want to allow my uh, edges and my seam allowance because remember I'm going to come back and cut off this salvage but we also want to leave room to add a bit of a border. So come in one and a half to two inches and then what we're going to do is cut in about a good, you want to leave probably a quarter of an inch between the clip and the seam. Now, because I made a 5 8 inch, my clip looks larger than it might otherwise. It would probably only be, be about a quarter of an inch. But this works for me, and like I said, I like the extra fullness of the frayed edge. So I just come through and I clip, and you know, some are perfectly even, <laughs> though not many. I mean, some are wide, some are narrow. Of course, you just sort of do what works for you. And I'm holding this away from me in a position that's that's not the way I normally do it. Here, let's see if I can do it this way. Okay, so we're just going to go all the way from one side to the other. Then when we get to the other end, we want to do the same thing where, oh, is that the even side? Okay, so these two pieces were almost the same. So I was thinking one side was going to be longer than the other. Well, that'll be down here. Let's go to one of these other pieces where I know we had some uneven ends. Well, look at that. Most all of them, here we are. I was going to say, I knew there were some. So you can see this one, that this is the selvage edge that I matched up. But on the other end, one was longer than the other. So I'm going to come in my one and a half to two inches from the shorter piece because this, whoops, I got a little close there. This will be cut off and then I'll start here. And like I said, I need to leave room for a seam. Now, what I will probably do, I wasn't paying attention and I clipped that way too close. It's probably going to be fine, but I'm going to come back and I'm going to stitch one more time from here to here just to reinforce that so it's going to be less apt to um, pull out. And I'm going to stitch right over what I have here, clip those threads, and we're good. So the beauty of this in particular, as far as uh, doing a fast quilt, is everything's one straight line. We don't have seams because we're using strips. We don't have any matching seams and we don't have to cut um, or clip those seam allowances going in the other direction as well. Everything is just going to go one way and that just makes it so much simpler and of course faster. 
All right, what am I cut? There we are. I think the fabric just folded over. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this. And when I come back, we're going to put more of this together. We're getting close now. Well, that went quite easily. All the uh, clipping is taken care of on my pairs. So this is what we're going to have our quilt top look like. I've got everything in order the way I'm going to sew them. And what I'll do now is I'll sew these pairs together and clip them and then come back and do the final set and everything will be good. So you can see it's just a nice even clip all the way across and it's going to go together very quickly. So I have my set of eight strips all sewn together and the back side is nice and smooth. The front side has the seams, everything is clipped. Now, before we add the border, I need to trim up the edges. Now, obviously the sides uh, edges are fine. I just need to trim across the top. Now, the best way to do this is to line up one edge on the mat. Here, I'll put it over here. I think we can see most of it. So this is, I know these are straight and I'm going to line them up. There we go. And make sure I'm right on track on that side and right on track over here. Now this is going to help me to get a nice straight cut across my my uh, quilt edge. So I need to come to the lowest point, which right now it looks like this one here. So I'm going to put my ruler right on that point, but I'm also, let me show you, I'm going to put this down, going to line a couple of my, uh, what do I want to say, my ruler grids with a seam so that that way I can make sure that I'm straight, not only with the edges, but within the quilt itself. Let's see, and I'm going to go to this here. And so we look at this and you see how these are nice and straight and we're straight on the edges and we have everything lined up. So now I'm going to cut and I will just take this straight across. And there we are. So we have a nice straight edge to work with. And from here, then we're going to add our borders. And this goes really quick. Um, I do want to show you how I did this. What I, I started with were two and a half inch strips and I need three layers in order to do the uh, rag quilting around the edge. And I had a little bit extra of these two fabrics, so I'm using them as my border. And you recall that I was intending to put all eight strips together and then create an even longer quilt with 16. I didn't like that. I like the two small quilts. Instead, I'm making two baby quilts. So every once in a while, a plan changes simply because it needs to. And that's kind of where we are. So... What I've done is I've cut two and a half inch strips and I'm going to put a border around this and we need to have the three layers. Now, the first thing we do, we're treating these strips exactly like we did the others. We're going to sew right down the center and we go all the way from one end to the other. Then we're going to do our seam allowance on one side. And I do this just because it helps to reinforce uh, the border. The border's going to be the, what do I want to say? It's going to be the strongest part around this quilt that's going to hold these edges. And I'll tell you, the reason I like borders on a rag quilt is if we were to just end here and sew a half inch around, I'm always worried that these seams are going to come undone. By adding this border, that's re reinforcing those seams. They're not going to be fraying out or pulling apart because this border is holding them together. I'm not going to have any seams up here, so I don't have to worry about that coming out. All I have to worry about is the corners, and I'm going to make sure those are sewn well. So I do put that extra stitching on the border 
and then I do come back and where's my other one do the same here so I sew down the center and both sides these actually will be where the seam falls and like I said for me I don't want to be going around and I'm fussing with getting these seams open and I need to have my border here whoops it needs to go this direction and I don't want to worry whether or not all these pieces are in place or if they're folding over by sewing it down it's almost like basting it and you could certainly use a basting stitch at this point I just use my 3.0 stitch that I'm doing the quilt with to begin with so I'm going to add these borders on once these are all sewn with the three lines of stitching I'm going to put them on the longest sides first because I only need four strips this is the width of fabric and the side of my quilt is the width of fabric so I know this is going to be long enough and this is just a little shy of 40 I, th I think it's like 36 ish inches and so when I put this on this is over 40 I've got plenty of room and uh, can get everything taken care of now with that being said I do want to give you a quick peek of where we're going here since I had a, a change in plan, I went ahead and threw this in the wash and look at how wonderful this is. Oh my goodness, it is such an adorable baby quilt. I, I just, I couldn't not do it that way. <laughs> I really, really love how this looks. It is so pretty. And these, you know, narrow strips, they look wonderful. I really like the look of the narrower strips on this. I might even try one going down just a little bit. I don't know. I don't know. That would be an awful lot of uh, heavy, heavy uh, fraying. It might be too much. This actually works out well. But check out that border. Doesn't that look adorable? Oh my goodness. And putting it in the corner and just see how nice and full that gets. So this is a great way to finish a rag quilt. So we've gotten a lot going on here. I'm going to finish this up. I do want to show you how to clip the border and then we are good to go. Great job. The border goes on very easily. And you just want to remember, since we're using the width of fabric, that we want to first sew our borders to the long length of the quilt, which is also the width of fabric. That way we know we have enough, enough uh, of our strip to go from one end to the other. And then I'll just come in and line this ruler. I'll put a straight line there, make sure I'm good. And I'll get this corner done. And I cut that with the seam open. And now we'll come back and do the other. And we do the same thing, just line that up, make sure this line is straight, and we're good. So I have the two long sides done. Now I'm going to add one more to the end, and that's all set to go. But I do need to show you one other thing. If you make the mistake of putting the short end on first, what's going to happen is when you cut it off, to put your next row on, you're going to come around the other side and be short because the idea is by adding these long sides, then I'm going to take this piece and it's going to extend over with extra fabric. But I didn't pay attention. I put it on the wrong way and I'm going to show you how to fix it. So when I, I did the, the first quilt, I had these little extra pieces. So I know that this direction is shorter than the other side. I mean, obviously I can tell that visually, but as far as my border pieces, I know I have some extra. So what I did is I went ahead and I started over here. That's what happened. So I sewed this first. And I realized, oh no, I'm going to come up short. This isn't going to work. I went ahead and sewed this to the end. So I knew where I was. And you can see, this is how far it came. It just didn't come the whole distance. But I had the piece I cut off from the other end. And I just sewed it right here. And now I'm going to sew this this way cut that off 
and I have my my uh, border all nice and perfect where I need it. The only difference, and you're really not going to notice it, is that we're going to have an extra seam right here. So we're going to have a seam here and here. Now, this one doesn't have that. I'm trying to think. Nope, that one doesn't either. But see how these seams come across? We're just going to have an extra one that goes up here. And I made sure that this seam is in line with the border below it. So when this gets sewn together, that seam's going to go straight up and look like it was meant to be there. I'll show you when this is finished and you won't even notice. So sometimes, you know, you just have to be creative. I could have torn it all out, but that didn't make sense to me because this was an easy way to go. And I had already sewn the whole piece in. <laughs> and so I found a way to fix it. So let me go ahead and do the last little bit of sewing. And then we are going to look at the clipping. And then we'll be good to go. We're just about finished here. And my sweet little quilt is all clipped. I have the rows all clipped and the border edges. This edge and the outside as well. All that's left now are the corners. And that's what I want to show you how to do. And the, the big thing that's different is the actual corner itself. What you're going to do is come in and cut just, just a little bit of that corner off. Just like that. Now, you're going to have seams on one or both sides. So I cut down that side and down that side. So this is what we have. We have a little loose piece. Now, you have to be careful because if you cut too much, all this fabric is going to come out. So I just put one little cut in there, and then that's going to loosen up a bunch of threads and fill it in. And you can see here how well that works. So you've got, you know, a nice full corner without all the knots. Because if you leave all that in there without cutting a little bit of it out off that edge, that's where you get those knots. And that can be pretty annoying, and it doesn't look very nice. Now, we're going to come in along here. So this is where the border was added. And just like we did before, we're going to cut in here and here. And then we're going to cut across the long way. And I got this far, so I'm just going to keep coming up. So I'm coming through. And this is where I have one of my row, my uh, seams, and I'm going to cut that in. I'm adding a few extra cuts just because this is so thick through here. And when I have a, a uh, seam right there, I'll usually cut either right on it or right next to it. So now this is all snipped up well. This is snipped up good. Now we need to do this side. So we've cut in there for that seam, but now we need to cut this direction. And just like I did before, one on each side, and just work your way out, and do the same this way, and that's it. So this is the corner that you would normally see. I do want to show you how to do the corner when you make the mistake and you have two seams because it's a lot of bulk in here, but it's going to work out. So again, we're going to come along this way. Let's tell you what, let's do this one first. Now you see when I sew this down that the seam is open, so this doesn't quite lift up in order to clip it well. So I clip it right up next to that seam. And now we can hold this open and clip what we need. So I'm going to come in here. And again, I'm going a little closer because there's a lot of fabric stacked in here. That's a thick seam. And we just work our way out. So now that seam is clipped. And we're going to come in and do this one. Now, this is a little different because it's sewn down here and it's sewn down here. So we're just going to do it like we would any other. And we're just going to clip each side. We'll clip down the middle like this. Turn it around. Clip each side. The middle and then one on each side of the middle. Like that. Then we come this way. 
and there's that and now we're here at our outside corner and again we're just going to snip off a little bit of that corner just to give us um, a little edge to work with just so we can cut an angle in there and that's going to help loosen up the threads so that they will they will uh, wash out and loosen up as they're agitated and I'm just going to go this way and we have that way and I'm just going to put one here and there we are so you see how quick and easy that is just work in one direction at a time and then come back and do the other direction and you're good so we're finished that's it borders on a rag quilt are really quite simple now, like I said, I do have a course that I offer. I'd love for you to take a look at it. There's a link down below, and um, there's a nice discount on there, too, if you're interested. But in addition to just a straight border like this, it's also a ruffled border, and that's really awesome. I think you might enjoy looking at that. I'm so glad I decided to go with two baby quilts. These are just adorable. I love those colors. And the pink and gray together is a great combination. But this side here, you can see, is the clipped one. Uh, this hasn't been washed yet, so it hasn't had the uh, the chance to get frayed. But you can see the border around the edges and all that uh, seam that has been clipped and ready to wash. And then this is what it'll look like after. This one turned out great. I am just so happy with these quilts. I hope you enjoyed watching. And I hope you learned a few things about rag quilting, about how to do it a bit faster, and uh, just have more fun with it. I'm so glad you were here with me today. Thanks for following along. I really appreciate it. Have a great rest of your week. And as always, it's such a pleasure to be here with you. Thanks so much.